If you own a classic Saab 900, this modification just might be one of the best you can do for this car. The modern classic Saab short shifter rids the 900 of that sloppy, spongy-like feel and replaces it with that of precision shifting. The new unit looks to be constructed of high-quality steel and aluminum. The kit comes with a new shifter assembly and a 3D printed nylon shift ball. The construction is a bit different than the OEM shifter assembly as opposed to all the plastic spring-loaded swivel ball and cup combination. The new one is a very high-quality part with Modern Classic Saab's logo etched into the base. Even the new 3D printed shift ball has the MCS logo printed into the plastic polymer. Here is a screenshot showing the two pieces side by side for a quick comparison. Before you can install this new piece, there are some parts inside the old unit that will need to be transferred over to make the new piece function properly. Get a glimpse of the old discolored plastics. You can clearly see these are worn out. These are likely the highest contribution to the sloppy, loose, rubber-like feel associated with it shifting these older cars. To remove the ball cup assembly, this cotter pin must be removed. Here's how you remove the shifter. Removing the shifter in this car is very simple. This mod should only take about 30 minutes to complete. First, remove the shift knot by simply grabbing it and pulling on it vertically. On my car, the gator was already torn by the previous owner, so I was able to just slip it off. Normally, this would stay on the shift rod. I'm going to move the shifter a bit. Look closely at the top of the ring that holds the shifter ball into place. Notice when I move the shift rod how you can see the space growing between the top of the ball and the ring holder. This worn out ball is what causes all the rubbery slop in these shifters. Next, take a properly sized Torx driver and remove the three Torx screws that hold the upper ball socket holder into place. Then simply lift out the shift rod assembly. Here's another close-up of the worn-out shifter swiveling parts. You can see inside the shift rod and view the metal hook in one of these slots of the reverse gear lockout collar. This will need to be removed. First, you will want to remove the locking cotter pin and then slide the old swivel ball cup assembly off the shaft. Next, find a suitable object to insert into the top of the reverse lockout collar. In my case, I used a suitable sized bolt to hold the hook tab still. The reason for this is that the hook tab needs to be held stationary because it is spring loaded. Next, unscrew the lockout pin at the bottom of the assembly. This is attached to the threaded hook tab shaft inside. Once disassembled, you can see the small shaft inside is threaded. Place the lockout collar over the new shift rod, then insert the lockout collar threaded shaft. On the bottom of the assembly, insert the spring and then insert the lockout pin and turn the pin clockwise to thread the pin onto the shaft. Remember, you will need to insert a properly sized object on top, such as a bolt, to keep the hook tab on top from moving.
Once it's threaded into place, you will need to measure the pin. The pin needs to be approximately 20.5 to 21 millimeters from the bottom of the shifter rod. You can adjust the pin length by turning it counterclockwise or clockwise. Next, a new nylon swivel shift ball can be installed. Simply slide it onto the shaft, align the holes, and insert the locking cotter pin. The tension on the shift rod is adjustable by this screw here. You can make the movement stiffer or looser to your liking. Next, you will need to lubricate the swiveling parts. I highly recommend Lucas White Lithium Grease as it does a great job of lubricating plastic parts without breaking down the plastics. Take a nickel sized amount and massage it into the part. Be sure to cover the ball completely as this ball makes a 360 degree contact with the shift rod cup. Take the notched side of the shift rod assembly and align it with the notch in the shifter housing and then lower the assembly into the housing. Put the three Torx bolts in and then tighten them. Then check the shift gate. You can see that this shift rod will have zero slop and has much more resistance to movement. What you will feel will surprise you. If you've ever driven a Honda, they have the highest precision when it comes to shifters, which is, in my opinion, better than BMW. But if you've ever driven a BMW with a short shift kit, then this is more like what this mod makes the Saab feel like. A superior precision feel that will undoubtedly bring more joy to driving an older classic car. Not to worry, I have a light new gator that I will install at a later date. I prefer these old accordion style rubber ones over the leathers. To top things off, I went ahead and got a new shift knob to enhance the feel of precision shifting. This looks great, even against the worn out interior of the car. A while back, I mentioned that I would give you the source of where I could get a crank sensor for the Saab 900 cars. And of course, things are kind of funny. You know, after I posted that video, the prices of those things went up, way up, way more than what I paid for. But hey, you can still get them if you need one or two. Instead, I'll do this. I'll give you the part number and you can browse to see if you can still get them for good pricing. The part number is on the screen. You can put this into the Google search bar and price options and suppliers should populate and then you can choose. 
The part number was sourced from the Saab Central Forum. Okay, that's going to complete today's video. If you like what you see, click that subscribe button and please like and share. See you in the next video.